oldest and strongest human emotion is fear. And the oldest and strongest type of fear is trepidation of the unknown. When we were children, our parents told us that monsters didn't exist. But we were sure that something was lurking under the bed or in the closet. Fear sees even if our eyes are closed. Welcome to the realm of the arcane. My name is Lon Strickler. Join me as I examine unexplained creatures, strange manifestations, and remarkable realities. Imagine this next hour as a voyage of discovery to strange lands, seeking not for new territory, but for new knowledge of the supernatural. Come on board as we begin this adventure together. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Arcane Radio. I'm your host, Lon Strickler, and I thank you for joining me here on the Paranormal King Radio Network. Now, uh, before I introduce my guest, I want to mention an encounter I, uh, a counter account I recently received. The eyewitness states, I first got married back in 1998. My husband and his family went to Matamoros, Mexico to see his grandmother. And when we were leaving, I was sitting in the backseat of the car. I was just looking around, and I glanced over. Something told me to glance over. So I looked over to my right, and as I looked, there was like a crowd of people standing on the road. But one man stood out. His face looked so weird. It was like he had no eyes. It was like his eyes were just black, and I'm staring at it. Something isn't right, and we're, you know, they were staring at me. The car turned, so I couldn't see them anymore. But next thing I know, I felt so sick that I thought I was going to have to go to the emergency room. And I'm telling my husband, I feel sick. All of a sudden, I feel sick. And he said, you know, him and his parents thought maybe it was the heat because I had lived in Alaska for three years and was trying to adapt to the heat. I said, no, I, I don't think it's the heat. Something just is not right. I thought I was going to die. They were trying to hurry up and get me back to Brownsville. And I said, take me to the emergency room. And instead, they took me home. They took me into a cold, dark bedroom. And his mom laid me on the bed. And I'll never forget, because I just don't believe in this stuff. I mean, I'm not very superstitious, but she went and got an egg. She took that egg and rubbed it over my body and was whispering something. I don't know if it was a prayer or what, but as she got to my right hand, the egg exploded and she became startled. I mean, the egg exploded everywhere. The next thing I know, not even five minutes later, I'm feeling better. It was weird. But all I know is what I saw in Mexico. It was the weirdest thing. Now, you know, this account of people getting sick after seeing a black eyed being uh, the first time I ever heard about that was from the late J.C. Johnson uh, in an encounter him and Jack Carey had down in, in New Mexico. They were um, they were in a car with two other people who were in the front seat. Jack and uh, J.C. were in the back. And this woman just literally was walking in the middle of the desert. And young woman and uh she was walking towards the road, so they kind of slowed up. And when she got to them, Jack and JC noticed that she had black eyes. And when she looked at them, they both got violently ill. So, uh, you know, JC, who had just passed about, well, about a year ago, he, uh, he never really got over all that. For many years, he, he kind of, uh, kind of bothered him and he uh i think it affected him f for the rest of his life so uh you know one day we'll get jack carey to come on the show and we we'll talk about that but uh it's it's an unusual phenomenon so i'd be interested to find out if anybody else has ever experienced the same thing so let's get started now tonight's guest is humanoid ufo researcher and author albert s rosales Albert was born in Cuba and migrated to the United States in 1966. He witnessed several unusual incidents in his youth while living in Cuba, which continued throughout his life 
in the United States. Now, Albert became interested in unusual phenomena in UFOs at a young age, but soon directed his focus to the crux of the phenomena, the humanoids and other worldly entities. He began collecting data on, on encounters from worldwide sources in the late 80s. His current database has over 20,000 entries, which is updated and corrected daily. Albert has published 16 titles, including his most recent book, UFOs Over Florida, Humanoids, and Other Strange Encounters in the Sunshine State. Now, Albert's humanoid database can now be found at www.iraap.com slash rosales. This is the website for the Independent Research Association for Anomalous Phenomena website. So, Albert, thank you for joining me. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Man, it's been a while since we've talked. Yeah, it has uh, been. Yeah. <laughs> you have been kind enough to offer many of your compiled reports to Phantoms of Monsters over the years, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about your earliest personal encounters or settings? Well, you know, I was back in, uh, when I was a, a kid, back, a young kid back in Cuba, I, I remember distinctly one night walking in a, there was like a hallway in my house and there was a mirror uh, right in the hallway and I was walking by the mirror. I was maybe uh, five or six. I looked up and there was a, a man in the mirror looking at me. Of course, there was nobody there. I looked behind me. There was nobody there. And I looked up. He, he, to me, what I remember, he seemed to have a beard mm. and some kind of helmet. Like, you know, like the Spanish used to wear, like conquistador type of helmet. Right. A beard. And he was, like, laughing. I I ran over my mom in the kitchen. And, of course, when she came back, he, the, he was already gone. Um, I remember another encounter. Um I wasn't alone. Though. I was. There was a whole bunch. Of, they, we had frequent, uh, you know, power outages back then in Cuba, and uh, they were. They're all. We were all sitting outside in front of the my house, my parents' home, talking. All of a sudden, we, we there was an object that came over the house across the street, and it looked like a, a huge egg, metallic. You know, and then they were all looking at it, and then, of course they were all screaming that there was the. Americans <laughs> invading. Yeah, that's where they yell out. So I was very curious. I, I followed it. I ran after it, and it, it, it kind of hovered over my the back of my house. And I stood there looking at it, and it was a light. And ne next thing I know, my mom is calling me, and I, I'm all wet. I don't know why. And I'm, I'm back in the... I ran back to the house. You know, I, n I never had any uh, hypnotic regression or anything done to me, but maybe, who knows, something else happened there that mm. night. <laughs> yeah, you hear a lot of stories. So it may possibly have been some type uh, of abduction or possible missing time. <clears throat> yeah, a lot. And that, <clears throat> that report you were talking about in Mexico, that, that's pretty creepy. I, I, those uh, black eye encounters, uh, th those entities, I, they're definitely negative in, in, you know, in nature. Very negative. Yeah, I, uh, I, you know, David Weatherly really started putting putting the black eyed kid phenomenon on the map. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting how there have been so many encounters since then. I mean, it, you know, I believe personally that these are some type of otherworldly entities now, or, you know, are they that, are they some type of possession or whatever? What, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? I don't know. When you say otherworldly, do you think they're like extraterrestrial or maybe from yeah. mention? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think they are, um, I don't, I don't think they're spiritual based. I, th I think there's something to do with, um, you know, like you said, extraterrestrials or some type of alien influence. And maybe, you know, what I'm, I have been thinking, maybe these uh, black-eyed kids, they're some type of hybrids. Well, that's possible right. as well. I th yeah. I've been thinking about that. Maybe this is some kind of hybrids that being let out, see how they react with humans and how the humans react. I don't know. 
Well, uh, you know, I uh, I'm I'm in the middle of writing a book right now about alien encounters, and um, I am going to include some some black eyed kid uh, or black eyed being. Okay. Yeah, reports in there. So um, I don't know. I mean, I I you know I I do believe personally that a lot of the phenomena that we experience as far as humanoid phenomena is is alien related uh even with the uh the wing humanoid sightings that i've been reporting on well i've been reporting on them for years yeah i I think they may very well be some type of alien connection with those as well i talking about the winged humanoids uh i was going through my files and i was looking up and this is back in like in 1930s and mm. again in Cuba there was a uh, I got this information from a, a researcher that lives over there in Cuba and and he he sent me a, like a list of you know and incidents uh, and uh, I think it was 1935 I don't have it right in front of me there was a family that lived in a, like this is in the country by the river mm-hmm. and it, and it was like 1935 Good Friday they, they they say and being very superstitious, everybody was staying home, and the kids they, they didn't allow the kids to go out. But one of the the children, a girl, went over to a, to the river. To there was like a, some mango trees there, and then she wanted to collect some mangoes. She was warned not to do it because, it, like I said, like a, again, it was a Good Friday, and you're not you were not supposed to go out in, on that day for some reason, and. and she went. She was uh, young, maybe eight or nine, uh, and all this. They 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 missed her, and uh, they heard screams, and uh, they ran out. The uncles and the father, and she was being carried by like a creature. This is a, they said what that they described the creature was like tall, black in color, with mm-hmm. huge wings, and mm. it and it seemed it seemed to have claws, and it was carrying the girl. And now the man approached it and, it's, you know, hit the creature with a stick or other, other, you know, they threw rocks at it and and it dropped the girl. Thank God it dropped mm-hmm. her and it, it disappeared, they say, towards the river. They don't know if it flew away or, they, or it, go, it went into the river. That, But it's a it very intriguing report, which is, I'm talking about 1935, you know. Right. I think that these, these creatures have been around with with us for a long time oh i think they have as well i mean you know when we were doing the reports in <laughs> chicago we also received several older reports and uh you know it, it kind of gave us a basis as to what people have been seeing in the area well of course up and around chicago illinois and all that it's there have been lots of Thunderbird sightings and pterosaurs and all kinds of things. So, mm. you know, flying phenomena is unusual for up there, even UFOs. So, uh, you know, you were talking about uh, Florida. I, uh, and of course, that's your home state. I I was receiving, well, there were three sightings in Pasco County during the same time that we had the uh, phenomena going on in Chicago. Pasco, that's up in North Florida. Was there like fly, uh, hu- flying humanoid in County? Yeah, they were. They were, and all three were in the Zephyr Hills area. And uh, the witness described something very similar to what they've been see- and we're seeing in Chicago: the uh, five to six foot in height on the body, a thin body, dark in color. Hmm. Uh, some were shiny looking, and um, the wingspan w- of. of bat-like wings with the wingspan of anywhere from 10 to 12 foot. And now those individuals, two of the sightings were along the highway. And uh, they were supposed seen by late night delivery people. And uh, in both instances, they saw a pile of deer on the ground near this thing. So... I, I'm quite sure this thing was either killing these deer and what it was doing with it. Nobody saw it eating anything. But that that was an unusual aspect to this story. Well, yeah, maybe maybe that's they're like some they're predator and that's why they 
Well, hopefully they don't go uh, <laughs> going to, running, to you. running humans. Yeah, really. right. But uh, there's a, a case here in, in Miami. I'm talking about you know heavily populated back in ninety ninety four. You know, I, I I'm, I'm going to retire this year, but I've been working for the police department as a dispatcher for right almost thirty five years. But anyway, uh, we received a call nine one one an older lady. She sounded very frightened, and I, I asked her. Uh, I didn't take the call, but the person that took the call asked her what what was the what was the problem. She said she looked in the uh, in the backyard, and uh, she saw what next to like she had a fruit tree, maybe it was a mango tree also, also. a tall dark winged man. She said it was like it's a, a step. He stepped from behind the tree and glided towards the side of the house. It like glided right over the ground. Mm. And then he had wings. He didn't move the wings. He just glided over. Uh, she attempted to get a closer view, uh, but looking out the window, by the time she did that, the figure had already uh, vanished. Now, her her take of the, the, the incident was that it was some kind of demonic, you know, manifestation. Mm. So I don't know. I I, I tend not to uh, go into that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this is something we've been trying to figure out. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you knew, but two of these sightings that we had received over the years, the, the being actually disappeared, just like it was um, going through a uh, through a doorway or a gateway. Right, a portal, maybe, you know. Yeah, and, I, you know, I, I kind of start yeah. believing that this is uh, – this may be some type of uh, interdimensional type being, and you know, you know, you know the Mothman sighting it's up in uh, up in Point Pleasant back in the '60s. I I have always thought that that was an interdimensional type being. You know, I, I think so too. And, and <clears throat> he also said that that for somehow there was there was a portal was open either intentionally or accidentally. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but th this theory was also advanced uh, when they had a, uh, ra a rash of sightings in Chile back in the early 2000, 2009. Right. And there was like incredible amount of incidents, uh, uh, winged humanoids, other type of, I, I don't know. And the late uh, Virgilio Sanchez Osejo that he visited Chile said that there was people that had seen some kind of like portal type open and and right around the area where the incidents were taking place, mm. but, you know. Uh, as, as you know, I had forgotten all about that because I know I, I did <laughs> post a series of reports that you had sent me years ago about all the sightings in Chile, and uh, I had completely forgotten about that. But you're right; there were a lot of different sightings. Lot. Yeah, some... it, it was. I I, like... I completely forgot about that. That's bizarre. Yeah, and all of a sudden they stopped around maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, 2003. Right. And they began, they began around 1999, and it, it was like hundreds of encounters. Too many of them to, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, some of the, um, you know, some of the anomalous humanoid sightings that some of the weirdest ones do come from down South America. I mean, it, it, you know, you've proven that because you you get reports worldwide, but. Yeah, I mean, between Chile and and, and uh, Argentina and Brazil, there just seem to be a lot of weird humanoid sightings. It seems like, especially Argentina, is like every year they got they just got one in January. It wasn't a winged, uh, you know, it wasn't a winged humanoid or anything like that, but it was is what we call one of the tall Nordic type beings. Yeah, he was. I don't know if you read it or heard about it. It was walking on the side of the road. There were about four witnesses in a vehicle. And he, he sort of glided off to the side of the road. It was a tall man like, uh, kind of wearing, wearing one of those uh, form fitting suits, maybe mm -hmm. light blue in color. Kind of, he had kind of a glow to him, very tall. And it disappeared off to the side of the road into an embankment. But this has just happened in January this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to look for that. Uh, you could find it in uh, an explicata. Okay. Uh, yeah, look it up there. Uh, uh, Argentinian humanoid, you'll find it. Yeah, that's Scott Corrales. Corrales, yeah. Scott. yeah he, uh, 
he gets a lot of reports from down in South America and other parts of uh, Latin America. Um, he does a really good job of well, UFO and uh, humanoid sightings. Yeah, it's interesting um, about it being a worldwide phenomenon. I, you know, I know of all the sightings that you received from the, the, the former uh, USSR and other mm-hmm. areas that were behind the Iron Curtain. And um, it's interesting when, you know, when the Cold War ended and all these reports started coming out of there, uh it was some very interesting stuff it, it was <clears throat> from 89 to let's say 80, 1989 through 1997 perhaps 98 there was a yes non-stop activity all mm-hmm. through that region a lot of it you know documented by by you know uh researchers there and they were you know not just they were like they were nowhere. They know where the, what they were doing. There's a there's a whole bunch of books and, uh, but you know, of course, they're all in Russian. And so, right. so it's, really, it's really hard to translate the uh, talking about the um, you know the former former Eastern Europe countries. I somebody just sent me a a case, which is really bizarre. Uh, I'll send it to you. Maybe you could include it. I'm going to send you some cases anyway. Maybe you oh, could. good. Great books. Okay, I haven't been able to do that in a while, but I will. This case, uh, it was sent to me by a uh, researcher from the Czech Republic. Uh, his name is Vladimir uh, Siska. He, he runs a group over there that is called Project Project Glow. This is the Eng- English translation. Mm-hmm. They collect they collect reports of encounters, uh, UFOs, humanoid. And and I was re- I was going through their website and I I saw a brief mention of a case there that interests me so I contacted them and he sent me a a brief summary and it's kind of really strange I I don't know what to make of it this is it happened back in '93 May 19 <clears throat> middle of the afternoon in a place called Babisi I don't know how to pronounce it B A B I C this is an old older lady uh, six, about 68 years old she she decided to take a walk. I ran her neighborhood, and, uh, and she was walking near a cemetery, near her home, and all of a sudden, about she noticed about 50 meters away from her a strange figure that was like walking towards her. She got closer to it, and she she described it as uh, looking like a girl, maybe 17 or 18 years old, beautiful blonde hair, and this is the weird uh, one of the weird part. Her head was encased in what appeared to be a, a glass ball or sphere. Uh-huh. Okay, covered completely. Her eyes were large, black, and round. They appeared, they didn't, according to the lady, they didn't appear to have a, a, any lid, you know, eyelids uh-huh. or or whites. They were just black, you know, like the black eye kid. And then uh, she was dressed in a blue outfit that covered her all the way down her the middle of her thighs and her she didn't see her arms they were either hidden or maybe she didn't have any she wasn't sure and the color of the the legs were blue gray in color the skin and this is another weird part and their the feet ended in what appeared to be hooves you know like wow and and when she walked this entity she she uh, over the you know asphalt she moves she made a lot the loud you know creaking sound it was like dragging her her feet she passed by the witness by the lady and what as she did uh, two two small white dots suddenly appeared in, in the eyes one in each eye and they moved like if they were looking at the witness and they were they looked at the witness the witness screamed and she she got behind the figure and watched it walk away about 25 meters away, this is another weird part of the story. The figure suddenly sh- rose and shot up, up in the air and disappeared at a very high speed. Now, wow. And, uh, you know, this is, we're talking about a black eye entity, a flying humanoid. I don't know, but this is a really weird case. <laughs> Well, you know, no. you know that this is something about the, the winged humanoids that I have been noticing over the years. How they just suddenly jettison 
from a standing position up into the air without flapping wings or without flapping the wings. You're right. Yeah. And, and you know, they, the people see them flying are basically gliding without flapping the wings as well as if they have other, some other means of, uh, acceleration. It's, it's a really strange phenomena. Um, I mean, they're definitely not indigenous. They're not of this earth plane. There's, there's just no way it could, it could be. No, it's, no. it's got to be some something that's either extraterrestrial related or I don't know. I mean, but that is that is bizarre. You know, I, I have received a lot of weird sightings in Eastern Europe. I really have. And, you know, there there does seem to be a lot of humanoid research in in, like you said, the Czech Republic. Yeah, Czech Republic, especially uh, yeah. Hungary. Uh, a couple other places is really hard to find anything. Like, I think in, in my database, I only have two cases from Albania. <laughs> right, right. So uh, I don't, I, you know, it, it, you know, you would think that if more and more people came forward in these countries, it would, you know, it would be pretty astounding of what we get. Uh, but I guess it's just like anything Hello? else. Can you hear me? I must have lost Albert. Oh. Well, there you go. There you go with Skype. Unfortunately, we've got a problem here. So uh, hopefully we can get him back. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not, but, you know, Skype does have its issues sometimes. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do. I guess I keep really? on going. Can you hear me, Albert? I hear you now. Yeah, what happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know how Skype is. It's it's pretty yeah, freaky no. sometimes. The men in black. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So um, you, you have your database now on the Independent Researchers Association of Anomalous Phenomena. Can you kind of tell us about that group? You know, I was, um, I was, it was years ago. I, that's when I started my database uh, mm -hmm. towards the um, beginning of the nineties, when I started distributing cases, uh, I, 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 you know, I sent my database to this group. Now this, I don't think that they're active anymore. Uh, oh. And what I have in that database is the old database, which is, you know, is nothing compared to what I have now. But I, I had most of my database in the UFO info site. And unfortunately, the, the webmaster there, has, his wife passed all of a sudden and he stopped, uh, he stopped doing any, every, anything there. Okay. Plus, I, I started doing my books and uh, my publisher didn't want me to, you know, have all those cases on the on the on the, on the ufo info site right. but anyway the, the main reason that i that i stopped doing that because he's you know the the owner of the sites uh, stopped uh, any activity right so uh, i'm planning hope when i retired to have a database you know as online hopefully accessible well i hope you do because uh you you had the I, I considered the, the the most absolute site for humanoid type sightings. It was uh, I mean everything was there, and I know you did write start writing the books and start putting those sightings in your book. And uh, you know it was always some place I could go to to uh, check up yeah and do any reference work because. Uh, uh, you know you can count on me, and I'll be sending you more cases. Uh, okay. Maybe. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I mean I appreciate that. I know when um, I know when I was in the middle of this the Chicago settings, you had sent you yeah. had sent a lot of reports of strange activity in the Chicago area. Right. And uh, there, you know, there was a lot there to you know a lot there to look into. So, um, so did you, um, you know, since you're in Florida, what are your, your fa most famous, uh, favorite reports at your home state? 
uh, the f- one of my favorite ones is the Flynn encounter in the Everglades back mm-hmm. in 1965. I don't know if you heard of that one. No. He was hunting and uh, and uh, what was the name of the uh, in the Cypress uh, Preserve? Oh, I understand. Right. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Mayaka? No, well, it's not as south of there. It's not Mayaka. It's okay. Cyprus in the west side of West Coast. Okay. Near Naples, Florida. Oh, okay. In that area there. So he came upon a a, a huge object on the, on, on the ground. It was like he said he was, he was huge, and they had rows of windows, lighted lighted windows. So he went, he went to approach it, and he got hit. All of a sudden, a beam of light from the craft struck him right in the head, knocked him out. He thinks he must have been unconscious for a while because he got up and the object was gone. And he had he he suffered from uh, eye injuries and all uh, for a while. And he was he was recently interviewed because I think he's still he was still alive. And he was a really interesting case. Uh, you know, he might have been abducted. That we never did find out for sure, but. That's one of the most interesting cases here in Florida. There's there's been many. I just hard to think of one. You know, back in '78, up in the, the Coast Guard base in North Florida, there were radar visual cases, and uh, near the uh, Ocala area. And oh, Ocala, there were, absolutely. Ocala, there were there were huge uh, objects seen in the woods. This is in '75. You know, the, the Scoutmaster incident back in 1952. Absolutely, the Everglades. Yep. Yeah, in Palm Beach. Yeah. Uh, that's a, there's a whole bunch. I, I hear them locally. I have talked to a, a lot of witnesses, mm. mostly from the East Everglades area. They, there's a lot of weird stuff going on over there. But uh, I was going to ask you something. What do you, What do you make of the um, this uh, per- pterodactyl sighting? So. That type of bird. What? What do you? Pterosaur think? sightings. Yeah, the pterodactyl. Pterosaur. You know, this is something that we have been getting for many years now. You know, J.C. Johnson used to tell me about a lot of the sightings that he used to get, and in fact, he um, he swore that there was a flyway coming up from Mexico into the United States. Um, he actually believed that they migrated, you know, uh, but, during the year into yeah into the United States. I, I don't know. You know, the most interesting sighting, the old an older sighting, and, and this was from Chad Lewis when he wrote the book, the uh, the Van Meter Visitor, and uh, that being was a um, was a pterodactyl type being uh, in Iowa. I saw the the drawing of that is yeah, and it looked just like a pterosaur. So you know, this this pterosaur phenomena, I mean, it, it's a nationwide. People have seen these things nationwide. Well, uh, I think worldwide too. Remember, I yeah, I, think I sent you a case from Poland, right? And and there's been cases in Spain, and Puerto Rico that I know of, and maybe other places. I don't know. I don't know how to really define what it is. Uh, I are they indigenous species? I don't know. Are they a relic? You know, I, I don't know as well. I mean, could these things also be coming uh, from an interdimensional? You know, through a portal of some type. Some people. I, some people think, or I thought maybe that they're like time slips. And right. And they're they're somehow transported to to our time from back in their time. And then they go back. You know, it's really hard to phantom that. I don't, I don't well, you know, but, you know, the sight, sightings of uh, prehistoric type beings, I mean, you know, is not unusual. You know, I've gotten these these reports of small T-Rex type be, uh, beings in South Texas for many, many years. Uh, this is something that Ken Gerhardt has looked into for a long time. And, right. you know, JC also had a lot of those sightings as well out, out there in the four corners. So what they are exactly, I mean, who knows? I, I had one uh, incident here in the East Everglades again. 
I spoke to the witness over the phone. I, he never did want to meet me in person, but he, he was out fishing and and with his son. His son lo- looked over the to the um, to the the woods, the type of the, the high grass, and he said, "Dad, there's a dinosaur." And he looked, and he said he looked like a like a biped uh, dinosaur, green, mm-hmm. or standing there, not too big, but he all of a sudden he just took off running, <laughs> and 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 this is. You know, it kind of, I thought it was very weird. I never had another one like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, these uh, these prehistoric type animals or beings, uh, they have been seen for many, many years. And in fact, I know of uh, I know of several settings that were that were reported in Montana of full size T Rex beings. Now. Full size, full size, and uh, I don't know what people were looking at out there, but there were more than one sighting, and uh, some of the colors of these things were like, like a reddish brown to a greenish color, and uh, you know the situation. I mean, where people saw these things were, uh, it was kind of bizarre. I mean, but I, you know. <laughs> The cryptid world is just so strange. I mean, you know, you know, we have even had, and I reported on these uh, these half man, half horse type beings as well, like uh, centaurs. Centaurs, yeah, that's a uh, fascinating cases. Oh, uh-huh. and you know, it's you know Leonard Dan, who who is a uh, who is a relative of uh, JC and uh, is a is a tribal elder out in the Navajo uh, reservation in uh, Arizona and New Mexico. Right. He had, he had talked about these centaur uh, encounters for many, many years. And in fact, he had written, drawn sketches of these things and it looks just like a half man, half, uh, half horse. It was the most bizarre thing you'd ever think of. But, uh, you know, when he and I had talked about it, he was, you know, he was really serious about it. Uh, so, well, the reports are there, and uh, yeah, they are there. I mean, is, is this a type of? I mean, is it just a manifestation, or are these things really live out there? I did an article years ago about centaurs in North America, and uh, it, it, it's just not concentrated in, in the desert southwest. There were sightings in Michigan in the upper Midwest, you know, several years ago. And um, who would think, you know, who would think something like that? I think uh, Linda Gottfried documented a couple of those also. Is that right? Yeah. And her website, I believe. And and they, and they were like from, uh, I think, in the Midwest. Yeah. A couple yeah, of Yeah, it, it's I, bizarre. And I know of uh, also uh, several encounters in centaur type beans from the UK, Liverpool area, and other mm. places. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. It is fascinating. Well, I mean, and, and those are similar to the the ones that looked like like pan, like the right, like the satyr type uh, beans. Yeah. With the hoofs and yeah, they've been seen in Europe and uh, UK. Yeah. You know, yeah. When when you really sit down and start thinking about these things, you, you got you know the first thing that comes to your mind is well, is there a parallel world of some type that's kind of overlapping? You know, we've talked for years about the the thinning of the veil and uh, where you know these beings from other worlds may actually be able to come into our world and vice versa. So. You know, I don't know how true that is. It, it does seem that as time goes by and you get more and more of these reports, uh, you got to figure something's going on. I mean, you know. I think, I, well, that's what I think. I think there's many other realms or dimensions around us that we don't know about. And sometimes that there's, an, for some reason, that uh, there's an opening and whoever's there gets to come over here and visit us for a while. 
And I think some of the disappearances that we know about are people, that maybe that's what happened to them. Maybe they somehow walked into another dimension. Well, you know, that's been a Rick's theory. Back. Yeah. You know, these uh, these missing 411 reports that um, yeah. David Pilates has been investigating for a couple of years now. Of course, he's written the books. There right. are a lot of those those incidents, especially in these national parks. A lot. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's so much so that it's it's kind of scary. I mean, I don't know if be honest with you. I don't know if I'd even want to go into a national park or out in the middle of nowhere anymore like I well, used to when I was younger. I wouldn't go by myself, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the first thing you think of when you hear about something like that is, well, maybe there's a Bigfoot abducting people. or, But it, it happens so quickly. It is almost like somebody walks through a, a portal of some type and just suddenly vanishes. Yeah. And, so, you know, the fact that these people don't return, uh, I mean, are they being abducted? You know, I look in, I've looked into that theory as well. That may be the case, but I, I, I really doubt it. I kind of believe that there is uh, there are instances where people can just be at the wrong place at the wrong time and just walk in through one of these uh these portals and just suddenly vanish yeah but a lot of these cases also they the bodies found uh dead uh, completely in the same area that where they've been searching and he talks about that he talks about why didn't right. they find the body before and all of a sudden the body appears and Shoe, shoes are missing and it's kind of a bunch of weird circumstances uh, well yeah that's like that Todd C's case that Butch and I have been looking yeah. into extensively I mean this guy <laughs> this this happened in, in Northumberland Pennsylvania back in 2002 and this guy goes up on the top of the ridge early morning doesn't come back they're out looking for him uh, I mean, there's like 125, you know, so people in a large search around the ridge in the area around his home. Nobody sees anything. There's no sign of this guy. Uh, but 36 hours later, they find his body uh, near the pond, which is just outside the house. I mean, it just it just shows up. Suddenly appears there. Yeah, so was it a bad abduction or did this guy just drop through a portal somewhere? You know, even though with that case, there were eyewitnesses of uh, a UFO, a large UFO above the power line at the top of the ridge. And that's where this, this end of, where Todd Seeds was supposedly been at. Uh Two of the fishermen on the Susquehanna who had a good view of it, even though there was a distance, they noticed that it looked like a, a man being pulled up into the into the uh, into the craft. So uh, I did not know that about. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, this, they, it's interesting. You know, they, they, Butch and I have been looking into this together since 2013. Now, Butch. You know, I had looked at it earlier on my own. It got frustrated with nobody was helping us. Butch looked into it several years before that. But we finally got together in 2013 and started putting our heads together. And in the meantime, we've gotten a lot of information. Butch was able to um, contact the independent, alt I mean, uh, the independent doctor who did the actual autopsy for the state and uh he got the full report so um maybe you should uh you and bush should write a book about this well this is going in my next book it is oh okay yeah we are we're going to publish this in the next book uh the david eckhart abduction and encounters uh which are, have okay. picked up again that's going in the book as well. So there's going to be a lot in this. Well, uh, that's going to be another one of your books that I'm going to have. I have all your books anyway. So. 
Yeah, this one we're we're I'm gonna kind of open it up for the um, you know, including cases that I have worked on with people, uh, some personal encounters I have had, plus uh, encounters I have gotten from uh, from experiencers who sent these to me and who I have talked to about them. So, yeah, I, this this Todd C's incident and the. Uh, and what a lot of going on with David is going to be in there. So uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff I've never t- talked okay. about before. I'm kind of coming clean with a lot of things. So uh, all right, looking forward to it. Should be interesting. Yeah. You think it's going to be this year? Oh yeah, I'm going to try to get it out. Oh God, I don't know. I- I'd like to have it out within by the time summer. But I don't know. Well, hopefully I can I can do it. I'm I'm trying to uh, get some time free so I can you know start putting more yeah. stuff in it. But uh, it, it's it's been a bit of a struggle so far. But hopefully I can get through it quick enough. So yeah. that you know that's gonna be that's gonna be something a little different for me because uh, I I have never really written a whole lot about the. Uh, about the alien phenomena, but uh, I decided, you know, it's time to do it because it's, you know, I've been involved with David for almost 10 years now. And, uh, and of course, with Butch and I looking into a lot of this uh, strange alien related phenomena, UFO phenomena for several years now. Plus, we've had other cases together as well. Uh, it, it's time to put some of this out there. Well, where your state, Pennsylvania, is like uh, it's nuts, incredible. It's like, nuts. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it it really is. I I, I know people get tired I, of me talking about it, but but do you ever wonder why is the, what is it with Pennsylvania? That, you know, we have. Um, well, of course, you know, Stan's been Stan Gordon's been Stan, yeah, reporting here for over fifty years now. Uh, you know, out there where he's at in Westmoreland County, uh, the, the northern part of the uh, the Chestnut Ridge, and uh, it, it's the the fact that all that phenomena happens out there, and then there are other hot spots in Pennsylvania as well. You know, it, it just it doesn't seem to wane off; it just seems to be increasing, and the the type of phenomena seem to increase as well even though it is something that has been part of the state historically we do get a lot of uh flaps of certain anomalies you know at times you know well i, I re- especially i remember the 1973 flap oh, it yeah. was nuts like you said in, in pennsylvania especially yeah i mean uh you know yeah. stan wrote extensively about that for years you know, about all the different sighting reports that, you know, got. And, of course, Butch knew about that as well. So, it, it you know, it, it was interesting that all those reports started coming in. But, you know, there was a lot of other phenomena attached to that as well. Of course, the, the Bigfoot sightings that were attached to the UFO sightings around that period. Yeah. And they still, they still happen. Yeah, that's that's one of the really interesting aspects of UFO and Bigfoot, which I I definitely believe there's a connection. Definitely. No, oh, I do too. Yeah. I mean, I have worked cases nationwide where people have seen Bigfoot and UFOs at the same time. I uh, I reported on a habituations area up in. Uh, the, the north coast of Nova Scotia for a couple of years. Uh, the the gentleman has since passed, but he he used to tell me about uh, all these Bigfoot that were he would see when the weather got good, you know, became clear up there, and he would see these groups of Bigfoot, and he was sketching these things and telling me of the, the evidence and stuff he was finding. But he was also telling me about these large, circular-shaped UFOs. And he also had several encounters with these things. But he did tell me one day about the, um, 
he had a large field across the road from from his home. He had a farm, and he noticed a a glass like large circular uh, UFO right. that descended and was hovering above the field, up just a few feet above the field. And he saw a Bigfoot descend from it, as well as a being that had feet that he later took photographs of the prints of it looked like a large turkey foot but the the three uh the three long toes this thing was almost 20 inches wide so uh and this is in, in nova scotia this was in the north coast of nova scotia yeah when was this Did oh he... this this was going on oh my god i guess about five six seven years ago I don't know the I forget the exact dates, but it was something I was looking into for about two years. That's not too long ago. That's very yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and but you know, there has been a lot of strange UFO activity in Nova Scotia and in the Atlantic Maritimes. It's just not talked about a lot. No, you don't hear too much about it. No, no. But yeah. you, uh, yeah, there's, um, yeah, that was going on. So. Um, well, and I, I think the gentleman himself was was physically affected by it as well. He had developed a, a few strange diseases that were quite explainable. And uh, I haven't heard from him. I, I, I just assume he passed away. You know, I, I did try to check into him, never got any responses. And uh, I believe that was the case. Wow. It, you know, it so, sort of reminds me of that case in France in 73, also back in November, where the, there were two witnesses that saw, they, they 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 were in a vehicle, they were parked, and they saw a UFO land also. And and from, you know, from this circular, it was large, circular, metallic. There was a uh, sort of a door that opened. And from, from it, at first they were emerged two little... Uh, entities you know small i'm not going to say grays i don't think they described it as grays but they were short kind of large headed and then after that there were came two tall human-like beings from the same ufo okay together mm -hmm. uh, long hair blonde hair and then the, the weirdest part after these came out they were walking around another being came out and stood by the door and this, this being they according to the witnesses the french witnesses it looked like a like a great ape is, yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, maybe I would have, I sent you that one, but you may have. You know, this is something David has been telling me about recently. You know, the um, the encounters in his home have again picked up. I mean, it, it, it is really picked up. He's been getting able to obtain some photographs, though it's not the easiest thing the world to do because. They they have destroyed a lot of his equipment, but he's been telling me that the type of beings that have been showing up this time around have been much varied as compared to what it was he was getting 10 years ago. At that time, he was getting a small grays and reptilians. There would be a couple reptilians that would come through, and in fact... The reptilians were the ones in charge of these abductions with him and his family. But now the beings that are showing up are mostly what look like humanoid hybrids or I, human hybrids. Okay. And that occasionally a, a reptilian will accompany them. But he said he gets as, as much as a dozen of these human-like beings come through he's in pennsylvania he's in pensacola Pens pensacola he's down in florida in florida oh okay yeah you know his whole case and he's been in the same area he's been in different homes but mm -hmm. uh these things tend to, to follow him around and in fact his, his family uh his daughter who got married and and moved to houston for a time they were uh, they were visiting her as well. 
uh, her and her husband. So mm. it's, <laughs> you yeah. know, it, you know, we've talked, you know, we've talked for years about these encounters being a generational type thing where other members of the family past and present would, would experience the similar type of phenomena. And, uh, it's definitely the case in, in, in as far as the efforts go. Well, and you know, it, it does, it seems to follow all the members of the family. Yeah. When there's a family involved, you know, it's like, and for generations too, you know, they, yeah. It, it, it's a tough situation. Um, you know, there have been a few other aspects as far as what's going on with David, which I had just found out about within the last week. Now, my, I can't say a whole lot about it now. Okay. But yeah. David was, uh, he was telling me and describing some of this new stuff. And I, I have been talking with my, my team about it. And uh, we're just basically trying to figure out everything that's been going on. But I, I will say this. It has to do with uh, sexual encounters and hybrid children. Okay. All right. So you get a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, this is something that we have heard about with other cases over the years where uh, with Brett Oldham, you know, you know who Brett Oldham is and his uh, encounters with what he said were was a child that he knew was his. Uh, you hear more and more about that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it seems to me that this is a way of, I guess, forcing or uh, intimidating these these people, experiencers, uh, to continue to cooperate with them by uh, by having children, hybrid children. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm afraid they're 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 gonna they're slowly replacing the the human race. <laughs> so, well, you know, the singularity aspect a lot is I think is real. Uh, I think the technology has merged with uh, you know with the human. And it, it, it's starting to possibly uh, integrate with uh, us as well. Uh, I do write about that in this book, you know, also because uh, there are there is a lot of evidence that that is actually happening. So to what extent it's going to, you know, we're going to experience, uh, you know, how far has it gotten already? Right. What are the implications? I mean, who knows? That's what I said. Who knows? So, Albert, uh, you've got several books out. Your latest was the UFOs over Florida. Do you have anything planned for the future? Oh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm, pl I'm thinking of doing uh, 2016 through whatever we get in 2019 of humanoid encounters. Well, you know, my... My database is open to you always, so, uh, you know. Thank you. you. I know. Yeah, that is, is a great source of uh, information, definitely, cases. Uh, so that's one of my plans, plus maybe I'm trying to do another one from personal encounters and personal uh, investigations. And I got a couple of things going on. I don't, you know, it's just been hard to, for me lately. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, when you get when you're retired and able yeah. to kind of get out there and do it, you know, I, it, you know, when I when I went on disability and was able to get more time, yeah, though I was kind of limited, I, you know, it it is, does make a big difference where you, you can kind of work on this uh, at all hours. And believe me, that sometimes it, it seems like it's a twenty four hour thing. Definitely, because right now uh, I'm still working, and sometimes I I work overtime a lot. And yeah, it's not easy. No. Mm. Good. no. So, Albert, thanks again for joining me and being on the show. It's been it's great talking to you again. You're welcome. I'm glad. We gotta we gotta connect a lot more. Yeah, we do. I just been uh, like I said, I and I don't really do too many of these. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, but, uh, but it's been you know my pleasure being in in your show. 
Yeah. Well, we'll talk soon, okay? Okay, so uh, this is it? This is it. All right, okay. You I'll, take care of yourself, man. I'll uh, talk to you later. All right, now. Bye. Bye. So listeners can share their support for Arcane Radio by becoming a patron. Simply go to phantomsandmonsters.com and click the Podbean patron banner. Arcane Radio also accepts direct donations. Now, if you have an unexplained encounter or sighting, feel free to contact me through Phantoms and Monsters blog site. I want to again thank Albert Rosales for joining me this evening, and I want to thank you for listening to the show. Good night, and have a great weekend.